Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to search within document content in SharePoint. We will perform the search from Power Apps by taking advantage of Power Automate and the SharePoint Search REST API. We can target the search to multiple document libraries, multiple sites, and we can create a full end-to-end -end document searching experience in Power Apps. So ready? Let's get started. We are looking at a Power App that has the ability to search for documents within SharePoint sites and it can search for the text that we provide in the search box in both the document content and metadata. Currently, the search configuration is such that it is connecting to two different libraries and bringing that information over in the search results. First library is my documents library that has six documents. And the second one is a library called doc that has 14 documents. The app displays the total search results that it has returned without any search criteria performed which basically is the number of documents in those two targeted search libraries. The gallery shows a preview of the file. I've also shown an icon depicting the extension of the file, the name of the file, the ID of the document in SharePoint, the size of the file, who created it, how many views, for that specific file. This is data that SharePoint tracks as analytics for every file. So as and when a file is accessed, the view count keeps increasing. Because in this scenario, I am targeting two different libraries. I wanted to highlight which library is this file related to. So I'm showcasing the name of the document library where this file belongs. Currently, I am showing the first 10 results coming back from search, but the total results is 20. And I have added this option for the user to go to the next set of results. Now, because in totality, there are 20 results and I am looking at 10 results per page, there are no further results. So there is no option for me to go to the next set of results, but I can go back to my previous set of results. And I have made the results per page dynamic. So the user can go up to 50 results per view and they can easily navigate through all the search results by using the next and previous buttons. Now from a search perspective, if I was to search 2133, now this search is being performed both in the document content and the metadata. So in this case, the name of the file is 2133. If I click on the name of the document library here, it will actually launch that file. Now let's try and search for Smith. Now in this case, it returns two results. The first one is a PDF file. Notice the name Smith is nowhere in the metadata of this file. But if I open this file, you will note that Smith is actually in the content of this PDF file, which search is able to crawl. And I also have an Excel file in this case as well. We can see that the content includes the name Smith. And observe the results returned are coming from both the libraries. That is because I have targeted search to only those two libraries. I can expand that target to be the entire site or it can also span across multiple sites or it can search across all your SharePoint sites in your tenant. And please note, search will respect security. The search is performed in the context of the user who is running the app. Let's try searching for pizza. Now in this case, it's returned an image file and a text file. 
if we look at the text file, I have the text pizza in this file and that's why search was able to pull this document and provide it in the search results. But the other option that I have is an image, which is actually a receipt. Now, if I open this, notice in this, there is the text pizza. Now, how was search able to return this result? Well, the way this works is in SharePoint document libraries, when you upload image files, there is a column called extracted text and AI in SharePoint automatically performs OCR to extract text from your image. So that text that it has extracted is what the search is being performed on. Now let's try and build this search experience from scratch in a new app. I have an app that has a text box, which will allow the user to enter text to search on within documents to call the SharePoint search API. Since Power Apps cannot directly call it, I will take the advantage of calling a Power Automate flow directly from Power Apps. So I will go ahead and create a new flow and create this flow from blank. I will call this flow search documents. The flow begins with the Power Apps trigger. There is a new version of this trigger. So I'll go ahead and use that. I will delete this existing trigger. Go to Power Apps and pick Power Apps V2. I need Power Apps to give me the search text that the user enters in the text box. So that I will pass as an input parameter to flow of type text. This I will call search text. And next, I would like to use the text that I receive to query the SharePoint search API. Now SharePoint search has a REST API endpoint that we can directly call from Power Automate to perform the search action against our document library. And the API is a GET request that we need to fire to this specific endpoint. And when we make this request, we can also pass our search query text. This is the text that we want to perform the search on. This search will be performed across the SharePoint search index which includes document libraries, lists, pages, and more. We want to keep it focused to document library, and we want to also target it to specific document libraries. We can do that by adding extra filter properties here. So let's go ahead and call this API directly from the flow that we are creating within the Power App. To make a SharePoint REST API call, we have a send an HTTP request to SharePoint action. Please note, this is a standard connector. So I will pick this action. Here I'll simply point to my SharePoint site. I am making a GET request against this specific endpoint. And along with this, I can put a question mark and pass my query text. In single quotes, we need to pass our text. Now, please note when we are making the request here, we need to ensure that we encode single quotes. So instead of putting single quotes, I will put percentage 27. Then I want to put my search text which in my scenario is dynamically coming from Power Apps. That's my dynamic content, search text, input parameter. And then to put the single code again, percent 27. Additionally, since I want to target a specific document library, all I need is the path to my document library. So I'll simply go and copy the path from the URL. 
And within the single quotes where I am passing the search text, I need to put a space. I need to ensure I put the encoded format for space, which is percent 20. Then my property is called path colon, meaning the path contains a specific pattern, which is the URL that I just copied to my document library. And right at the end, I'll put a star. So anything that falls under that document library, go and return all those results. For headers, content type will be application JSON, except will be application slash JSON. And once the search is performed, I would like to pass the result back to Power Apps. Now, in order to see the format in which the results are returned, I would first need to run this flow. So for now, I will simply pass sample data back to Power Apps. So I'll add a new step. Search for respond to a Power App or flow. I'll pick this specific action from the Power Apps connector. And I will add an output of type text. And I will call this search results. For now, I will simply pass the text sample. I will go ahead and save my flow. So this flow will be saved in Power Automate. And once that's done, it will then add a connection to the flow directly in Power Apps, which allows us to call this flow simply by typing the name of the flow. So to call the flow, I will insert a button. I've changed its text property to flow. On select of this button, I will call my flow. So I'll use search documents and call the run method to trigger the flow. It's asking for the input parameter of type text, which is called search text. This will be my text box control dot text. And this flow when called should return output parameters. So to get those values, I will set a variable called var search results when calling the flow. So if I preview the app, search for text contract and click flow, this should go and call the flow. And once the flow successfully completes, it should send me the response back, which I should receive in the variable. The response variable would be a record that will include that output parameter, which was called search results. And the data for now is that sample data that I was passing back. Now, if we head over to Power Automate, and if I go to my flows, here is the flow that I created called search documents. And we can see that the flow has triggered. If I select this flow run to see the inputs and outputs of the actions, the flow triggered with the search text coming from Power Apps, which is contract. Then the HTTP request to SharePoint action was calling the search API. The query text was the text coming from Power Apps. And then the path is the path to my SharePoint document library. Here is the response output that I receive from the search API. If we go to show raw outputs, body is the response body that we get from the search API action. It has a property called primary query result. Within this, it has relevant results. Within this, it has a property called table and then rows. Rows is an array. This array is an array of objects that has a property cells. And within that, it will have all the key value pairs. So the row that it has returned 
is basically a file called file archival using power automate in my document library. So if I go to my document library, here is file archival using flow. That's the document. So let's search for the text contract and this document. And here is that text. All the search results are in this property called rows. The row count gives me the current number of items that it is returning as part of this search call. And total rows is the total number of records that it has searched for. So these three key attributes is what I would like to pass back from flow to power apps whenever the search query is performed. So back to my power app, I will go to flow and edit the flow from my power app where I am passing the search results. Instead of passing the text sample, I would like to go to that specific rows object in the JSON response from the body. Now note here, I only get the body as dynamic content. And if I select this, it will put that specific dynamic content here. And if you hover on this, it will give you the expression behind this action. So what we can do here is we can perform a control A, control C, select and copy, remove this, go to expression, control V, paste the formula that it copied. It will begin with an at symbol. We need to remove this. Now I need to start traversing through the JSON object. Question mark, square brackets, under single quotes, primary query result. Next, relevant results. This is all case sensitive. Question mark, table, question mark, rows. That completes my expression. I will click OK. That's the array of search results being returned as a text. Why am I returning this as a text when I should be returning this as an array? Well, because currently the respond to a power app or flow action does not allow me to send array of data back. Next, I'll add another output property of type text. This will be total rows to get this. My expression is body of send an HTTP request, go to primary query result, relevant results, and get the total rows. Another output property of type text, I will call it row count. This one, the expression would be, once again, all the way to relevant results, row count. I will go ahead and save the flow. Once the flow is saved, I will close the flow. At this point, it is refreshing the flow connection in my power app. This time, if I preview the app and call the flow again by clicking the button, if we observe the response that we get, I get three attributes. The search results, which is data type text, but it is a JSON array that I can traverse through and get the data that I need, which has the information about the document that it has searched for. I have the total rows and I have the row count. Now to display the total results that it has searched for, I'll add a label control, total results, put an ampersand to concatenate this with my variable, which holds the response from flow, where search results dot total rows. Now to show the response of the result, because it's an array of data, I will add a gallery control. The key variable that holds the array, which is where search results, in there I have a property called search results, which has that array so I need to pass this 
to JSON and convert it to tabular data. So for the items property of the gallery, I will use parse JSON. Input is a JSON string. In my case, it's where search results dot search results. Now this will return a JSON object. It's an untyped object because Power Apps does not know the schema of that JSON. Type cast this to a table. And this will return all the objects within my rows array. And these are also JSON objects and they are all untyped. Now let's say I would like to show the title of my file. To get to title, I need to first get to cells which is an array. So in my gallery, for the title label control, the text property, I need to first get to cells. So I can use this item dot value dot cells, case sensitive. Cells is that array, it's coming as an untyped object. So I will convert this to a table. So this table basically is this array. Now if I need the title, notice the property key is what I can query pass title and just fetch the value in property value. That's where the title is. So here I will use the lookup function to query this table of cells where this record dot value dot that property which is key is equal to title and from here go and grab that value object and in there get me the value property. Now this might look a little complex but guess what once I write this formula, it's literally rinse and repeat for any other property that I need. Let me show you how. Let's say I want the author. All I have to do then is I can simply copy this. I'll go to my label control subtitle 2. I will paste the same formula here. But instead of pointing to the title key, I will point to the author key. And just like that, it gets me the value. I can also call this directly in the browser experience. So if you note when my flow is running, I have the URI. I can simply copy this, go to my SharePoint site, point to my SharePoint site, and then paste that query. And if I fire this in the browser, in the browser, it will return the data in XML format. But what does the browser experience gives you is the ability to quickly test things. Now, if you read through the search API documentation, there is a lot of other things that we can do from filtering to batching and a lot more. We can add a star before and after our search text. And let's say I search for the text A. Even for example, if the text is Reza, it will return because it finds A within it. And now back to my end-to-end -end demo that I showcased earlier. The way I built this one, if you observe my flow, I have my search text that I'm passing, but additionally, I'm also passing row limit. Like what's the total number of rows to return? And start row basically indicates which set of data it should return back. Now if you observe my query, I'm targeting multiple libraries. So I have a couple of calls to the path property based on those two libraries that I was targeting. My row limit is dynamic, my start row is dynamic, and then I have another attribute called select properties wherein I can pick the different search managed properties that I would like this query to send back. For my SharePoint site, 
search has a schema associated with it. So if I go to search schema, we have the concept of managed properties. For example, document link, it gives me a link directly to that document or give me the picture thumbnail URL. So that's how I was able to show the picture. File extension, total number of views of that document in SharePoint and so on and so forth. And then back to my power app, notice I don't have a search button here. The reason is I have hidden that button and whenever the user enters some text to search on change, I am calling that button by using the select function. And what that search button on select does is it goes and calls my flow. It's passing the row limit, which is coming from my drop down pagination size. So that's completely dynamic. And where from is a variable that I'm maintaining to decide where should it start from. By default, it starts from zero. So it shows me the first set of results. Let's say the first 10 results. When I hit the next button here, that variable I incremented based on the page size. So when next is click, where from will become 10. And then I click the button again. So it gets the next 10 results. And when I hit the previous button, which is currently hidden because I am on the first set of results. Here, I simply subtract from the pagination size. And notice one thing here, when I'm running the flow, I'm not just directly passing the text. I'm using a function called coalesce. Coalesce gets me the first non blank argument. So in case the user does not enter any text to search, if you need all the results, all I have to do is pass star. And then for the gallery, I am using exactly the same concept as I showcased earlier. Once I have that formula, I need the file name key. So that's my key. Get me the value. I need the thumbnail. So I used an image control and pointed to the picture thumbnail URL. I need the views and so and so forth. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.